and welcome to the first live event of the Aaron Whiskey Festival Multi Music 2021. I still struggle to say all of that in once. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, tuning in and for joining us uh, today. This is Mariella, uh, Global Brand Ambassador and Brand Manager for Isle of Iron Distillers. And with me, we have... Hi guys, I'm Lucy, one of the Regional Sales Managers for Isle of Iron Distillers. So happy to be able to share some grams with you today. Obviously not in person again, sadly, but uh, hopefully that'll come next year. Yeah, soon, first. soon. Hopefully this will be the last virtual festival <laughs> <laughs> ever, uh, so that we can finally see you outside dancing and drumming and having a good time uh, again. And June with his book, uh, guitar as well. We need to see that again, exactly. live, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so for those of you that are joining us just because you love iron whiskey and uh, you have some iron whiskeys at home, thank you for doing that. For those of you that actually managed to grab a tasting set, um, today, right now, we're obviously going to do the limited edition uh, mystery tasting set. So you should have received this lovely box, hopefully safe and sound, very hard to open with one <laughs> hand. Uh, with the schedule of the day, of course, and then you have six mystery drams. So to make it even more mystery, we didn't even add um, ABV uh, so that it, it's even harder to, to guess uh, what they are. But yeah, we have some other events on today as well. Just a, a little bit of info about the rest of the festival. There was a, a Locranza distillery tour that is now available to watch on Facebook and YouTube that you can see at your leisure. Uh, our amazing tour guides are going to be live um, in a couple of hours as well. And they have an amazing tasting set to go through too, full of cast samples. And then some lovely live music uh, with Crofters music and Mike Bailey, which is a local artist. So yeah, the beauty of virtual events is that you can log in whenever you want and you can I just know, watch them live. So from your sofa. Yeah. Um, just make sure that you have a if you're watching this make sure that you're putting yourself a dram so that we're all, <laughs> yeah we're all tasting together uh we obviously will be monitoring comments and questions so please do say hi uh we do have a screen over here so if you see us looking down <laughs> there's not a cute dog here or anything it's just a screen uh but please do say hi do engage and most importantly you need to guess you know this whiskey is Exactly. Yeah, we want to hear what your thoughts are. So the whole idea is to kind of taste it blind. We'll try each and every one of the whiskies. Um, we'll have a nose. We'll kind of share our thoughts on sort of profile and, and tasting notes. Please also share your thoughts at home and have a guess of what they are as well. Because it'd be quite interesting to hear yeah. your thoughts. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then we'll do a reveal for each one as well. So. Yeah. So this is it. This is us. We're keeping this super friendly, super informal. So feel free to ask us whatever and uh, and engage. But I think no more talking. Some drinking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> drinking some whiskey. Definitely. So what we're obviously drinking now is um, whiskey sample number one. Um, I think if you look at uh, the color, I think we're going to do this for, for all of them. Yeah. So first little you know hint is the color itself. Um, it is quite pale. Yeah. That's... One could say maybe a bit of an obvious uh, boot uh, maturation yeah, here. A hint there potentially. Yeah. Let's have a nose as well. Oh, so they're starting to really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone is saying, uh, ciao, uh, Gerald de los Santos is saying, ciao, Lucy. Hi, Mariella. Ciao. Great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and virtual hug and regards from Sydney. Thank you very much for tuning in from Sydney. That's amazing. And a virtual hug to you as well. Hopefully soon real hugs as well. Johan, lovely to see you again as well. Thank you for, for joining us. Hope you have the set and you're testing you're tasting this at home as well. But yeah, I mean, the nose, it's so iron. <laughs> uh, it's very fresh, very fruity. Very, very um, banana, vanilla, almost like a banoffee pie, sort of like yeah, no vanilla. Super sweet, manuka honey. And please guys share your, uh, your thoughts on the nose uh, as well. Nice. This is sort of, this is definitely my, uh, Your my style. sort of, yeah, I'm always, if you, if you ever watched, unfortunately, if you ever watched any other videos with me tasting iron in it, you will know by now that I am a, I am a sucker for American oak, one could say, <laughs> and uh, I absolutely adore iron matured in bourbon cask. I think there is something 
about the new make that we created is quite sweet already and quite floral, beautiful texture. And then those, yeah, bourbon cask notes are just like match made in heaven for me. It's summery, it's like fresh, summery, vibrant, lovely, you know, rich, uh, creamy dram, which I really mm. like. As, as you say, very Aaron, Aaron's definitely at the center of that. Quite like lightly fruity, uh, lots of apple as well, which is our signature kind of yeah. pie style, isn't it? Lovely orchard fruits, fresh orchard fruits, juicy orchard fruits. Shall we have a little taste? I think. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you, Fiona, by the way, for uh, <laughs> for watching from Black Water Food as well. Yeah. Hi to you and hi, David, as well. Love it to see friendly faces. <laughs> but yeah, I guess like, I mean, I could, yeah, <laughs> this is so much my, <laughs> so much my thing, Desert Island Dram, I love, I love that, again, what he promises on the nose, I think he delivers on the palate very well, super, super fruity. It's got that really nice sort of like multi undertone as well, you yeah, get often with uh, bourbon and iron. Absolutely. You also think from the texture, I think, and from the freshness, the vibrancy, you can... I think you can, if you tried Aaron before, you can tell that he's relatively young in a way. And he's still quite, you know, not, not punchy, it's not the right word, but it is vibrant. It's very much alive on the nose and on the palate. And the ABV, you can tell that it's a little bit higher mm -hmm. as well, <laughs> which we don't mind. We do have some water, so hopefully you'll have some water at home as well if you want to add a little drop. Um, to the whiskey itself these are i think it was written i don't know if it was written on the tasting pack but on the website it definitely says these are all cast strength unfiltered and uncoldered so classic iron style so if you find them a little bit uh, punchier feel free to open you know to open them up yeah with a drop of water but uh, as we are super experienced whiskey drinkers we <laughs> i'm obviously kidding <laughs> but no yeah. So do you have any guesses, guys? Let's see what you're saying in the comments. Superb drum to start uh, with from Jan, Whistlers in Belgium. I'm glad. Perfect aperitif. We started like, you know, light and fruity, yeah. which is nice. Do you have any guesses on which whiskey this could be? Let's see. No, you're wondering. <laughs> well, we were saying before we did call this a limited edition mystery tasting uh, because um, all of these whiskeys are limited in a way. Some of them are not very easy to find. Some of them are a little bit older. Uh, they were released like a, a few years ago. Uh, some of them are just very popular. So I think it was just great to be able to open and share these because maybe especially throughout the pandemic, you didn't have the chance to go to a whiskey festival and try them out or to go to your favorite bar and try them out. So just great just great to uh to start <laughs> my lord said controversial to start with talisker and you're right this is actually <laughs> a talisker storm <laughs> no <laughs> not not young mister says quarter cast and um, good thought i mean you you are on the you're definitely on the right path uh there in terms of bourbon cast maturation, cast strength, cast strength and as well. yeah. uh, but uh, it's not, um, uh, it's not a uh, quarter cask. Um, another person uh, that is joining up from Australia, there's two people from Australia, that's amazing. Can we get a shout out for Dale, Robert, Andrew and David? Yay! Dale, Robert, Andrew and David. Shout out, shout shout out to you guys. <laughs> But yeah, well, we're going to reveal what it is. Shall yeah, we reveal so what it is? Drum roll, please. So the first of our mystery jam is this guy over here. So this is our Master of Distilling 1. Uh, so this was released to celebrate uh, the 10 years of, of James McTaggart working with us at Arran. Uh, so we had 53 first fill bourbon barrels that went into making this absolutely gorgeous dram. Uh, 12,000 bottles were released, so a limited edition. Um, and we've gone for a film style packaging as well. Um, yeah. uh, so not a scary dram, even though it's kind of Hitchcock-esque. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
really sweet um, and just a really nice way to kind of celebrate actually the first casks that James McTaggart will have actually filled uh, when he joined the company. So something pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. For those of you that don't know this beautiful profile of uh, James McTaggart, <laughs> uh, uh, James McTaggart is our, uh, used to be our distillery manager until a few years ago, and is today our master blender director of production and everything else in between. So uh, I always used to say it's one of those old school distillery managers, you know, that actually do everything from A to Z. It's, I think it's hard to come by people that are like so skilled and and just so amazing really at their jobs. And he joined us after working for Bomor. He's a he's an Iliac, he's an island man. If you I think if you heard him speaking, you could tell straight away from his accent. You can't hide that. <laughs> and uh, and yeah he joined us uh, more than 10 years ago. And uh, since he joined us we the company also changed um massively. Uh he improved you know our wood policy uh mm -hmm. incredibly and uh, we launched, I think, our marketing wars with him as well. We got a, a bit of his expertise from Bomor. Um, but yeah, it just, it's amazing that this, you know, he's still around. He still gives us, you know, suggestions and helps us along the way. And, you know, it still gives us guidance. And it's great to be able to work with, uh, you know, with, with a man that maybe it doesn't get the... Uh, the fame that he that he deserves but then again if you met james maybe he doesn't want that thing so <laughs> so yeah lovely lovely man so shout out to james um uh, cheers, to that. cheers to that cheers to james <laughs> nice so this is possibly actually we should say it's possibly one of the hardest one to come by of the of the tasting set today mostly because it was released um quite a few years ago mm -hmm. and fun fact i actually i told you this before when i uh was uh, jobless and uh, I, I i left the uk and i was trying to get into the industry again i remember visiting milroy's in london this was 2018 and uh, the guys at milroy said uh, i wanted a, a drum and i said classic me can i get like a very fruity bourbon something and they said like yeah try tried this and they gave me a drama of the James McCarter, which obviously I didn't know anything about at the time. And I fell in love and I bought a bottle and little did I know that like nine months later, I would be working for the company and meeting James as well. So it's a, it, it's a special place in my heart. It's really it very much showcases Aaron, like, you know, at his best in, in beautiful, fresh, you know, first filled bourbon casts, which I absolutely adore. So great dram great start and yeah lovely way to start yeah i'll put it back here just for you but let's see what you guys are let's see what you guys are saying in the comments we will before we move on to whiskey number two did you try this before oh Dwayne said it's always on my shelf that's nice burger saying one of my favorite that's great too <laughs> david is joining us with the robert burns that's a fine whiskey indeed Russell says, my wife gets me a different one every Christmas. That's a wife to keep forever. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, my friend, the next colleague is saying hi. Hi, Chris. I hope to come and see you in London very, very soon again. Nice. Cool. Shall we move on to whiskey number two? Let's do it. Let's do it. Whiskey number two. So <laughs> this happened like maybe a minute before we started the live tasting. I picked up the whiskey to have a nose and I found an extra meaty <laughs> flavor in my glass. I actually have a lovely midge. <laughs> Midges haven't gone away for anyone who hasn't been to Aaron for a couple of years. Absolutely. Uh, for the pandemic, the midges are back and they're uh, joining in in full force, including in the glass, apparently, this time around. There is a reason why we, all our windows are shut in this room right now. And as for those that come to the festival every year, you will know, like, you know, they're still there waiting for you, crying and waiting for you to come back. But uh, they obviously loved whiskey number two so much, they decided to, okay. to join. Yeah. A B line or a midge line. <laughs> Cheers. For, I mean, that's a. A horrible, but also a nice way to die, I'll say. <laughs> but yeah, this is super interesting. I think if you tried this before, you recognize it um, straight away. Mm, it's, it's definitely got a very distinct nose. It's a kind of slightly different style, uh, Aaron, in terms of the cask that was used. Um, it's definitely it's still got that fruitiness there, but it's, uh, as you say, it's got that kind of like very interesting, yeah. different style undertone to this. Uh, particular whiskey 
I called this um, the Marmite uh, of whiskey because um, I've had people smelling this and tasting this is like, oh my God, this is amazing. Where can I get it? And then I had people smelling and tasting this and saying, I think this whiskey is off. <laughs> and I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just different types of flavors can go in a multitude of like, you know, different ways. So for me, it's got a very buttery nose. Um... That's something I picked up right away. We kind of went through the absolutely the, the drums earlier as well, just a to... warm like sourdough with yeah. you know like proper like warm warm sourdough, just bake like butter like you know melting on top. The sort of like uh, yeah, super buttery sourdough, yeasty yeasty sort of like nose. Very interesting. I think it's very interesting if you like your whiskeys a little bit old school mm -hmm. as well, and you uh, you like a bit of that. Um, Danage warehouse, you know, or bodega sort of uh, sort of smell that oxidization and like wet wood sort of thing. I know for some of you that sounds disgusting, but it's actually <laughs> super exciting. It's almost got something slightly briny as well to the to the nose, which is quite interesting. Absolutely. Let's have a, a taste. Try not to drink the. Cheers. You know. <laughs> yeah, avoid the mint. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <Extra proof. laughs> Hmm. Oh. Man, it's so good. <laughs> I forgot how good that was. Mm. So weird, but wonderful. It's, it's like it's something it's definitely unexpected. You kind of yeah. take a while to kind of take it all in, really. Yeah. And, uh, have it, a first sip of this whiskey. Absolutely. It may. It, it's almost like eating tapas. It's mm. almost like I'm eating manchego and salted like mm. uh, almonds. Yeah, it has got that sort of salty. Very so, salty. yeah, you did say that brininess mm. is also very much on the palate. It makes you salivate yeah, a lot. 100%. Like, uh, I can feel my mouth going. It's just very, very unique. What do you think, guys at home? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just read this and I realized, should I mention or should I not? But Dale said, shout out. This is another shout out <laughs> for young Finlay, his first whiskey at 14. And I'm like, it shouldn't really be. <laughs> Drink responsibly and don't give whiskey to kids. Thank you very much. Uh, so, no. Unless, obviously, supervised by his parents, I imagine. So, it's okay. But uh, but no, no. It has got quite a lot of citrus going on as well. Kind of more that uh, kind of lemon lemon peel. Yeah. That sort of thing. Andrew Ford, uh, sorry, just a little interruption. Andrew Ford said that, unfortunately, his uh, samples are still in transit to him. Um, so do please send us a message, um, either on Facebook or email or whatever you you want to contact us. And we're more than happy to send you the list of all the, of all the, the samples. Yeah, so you shouldn't watch this then. <laughs> Otherwise, you get spoiled. Like, you know, you know exactly what's in the tasting set. You shouldn't. By the way, I think we have a winner. I think we do. I just noticed that. Yeah. On the as well. I think someone has guessed. Jan, Jan knows. Jan, Jan knows. knows. <laughs> it is uh, Palo Portado. Very good shout. Absolute very good shout. It's um, a rare and sort of like not very much seen cask, no, in the whiskey industry. Certainly, because obviously it's quite interesting. You have sherry casks often talked about when it comes to whiskey maturation, and you often hear about Oloroso and, of course, Pedro Jimenez. PX. So for this, we've used a slightly different type of cask. We've used um, a Palo Cortado cask. As Mariella said, it's a slightly different style sherry. Um, so what uh, Palo Cortado is, it's a sherry that sort of starts off uh, kind of in the, in the throes of becoming a fino. So you have a layer of floor, which is like a, a layer of yeast underneath, as are on top of uh, the sherry. And for some unexplained reason, uh, the floor starts to sort of break away and the whiskey starts to oxidize. So you actually, uh, the uh, sherry rather starts to ox oxidize. <laughs> so you get something that's kind of a cross between an Amontillado and an Oloroso. So it's quite a, an interesting and unique style um, sherry at the end of the day. And we also get to work with a fantastic bodega to get hold of these very rare casks. Uh, this is a bodega called uh, Jimena Spinola in Jerez in the south of Spain, a lovely family owned company. Something else that's really important to note about these casks is they're from a 1964 Solera. So super old, super rare, and it's just absolutely amazing we, we get access to these type of casks and, and get to kind of play with their use when creating yeah. our lovely uh, Aaron whiskey. 
Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers again. Delicious. So mm. I think it's obvious uh, which whiskey it is, yeah. uh, because there's only one Palo Cortado. I mean, recently Palo Cortado in our range, and that's obviously our master of the ceiling number two. So uh, the second edition of the first whiskey that we talked about. You can see them nicely yeah. lined up together. There you go. James features. So obviously we convinced them to, uh, <laughs> I don't know who convinced them to get dressed up like that and also, you know, take these wonderful photos. But instead of Hitchcock here, we have James Bond. So are you James Bond fans at home? Because we have some amazing fans for you. I hope you enjoy <laughs> this. Uh, <laughs> what we have here is McTaggart, James McTaggart. I know you can cringe away. The man with the golden glass. It, it gets better. Wait, wait. It is a James the Target, age 12 year old whiskey, licensed to distill. And with that, I think we should end the, the streaming now and go home. <laughs> I'm joking. Well, the, the, the packaging is fun, but it's really what's in the glass. Okay. And it's absolutely amazing. As, as you were saying, these are real Solera 1964 casks, you know, that you don't come across every day basically. absolutely not and i think when james had the opportunity to go and grab these casks he didn't even blink you know twice and he just went to spade bought them and used them for this wonderful finish so the whiskey is 12 years old uh 10 year in bourbon casks so it would be the same sort of cask that you know were used for the similar you know sister casks to the master of the selling one and then finished for two years in this very palo old cortado. solera uh, palo cortado casks 12,000 bottles, like the Master Distilling, that were released worldwide, um, bottled at 51.8%. Um, the cast strength, again. Again, cast strength as well. Um, I think it just, again, I think it, I'm glad that we were able to share it because you don't often see it open and you don't often get people to drink it, but it, it really shows how, I think it opens up a conversation about sherry that mm -hmm. most of the times we don't open up, especially these days where, People want something very dark, uh, you know, and people were like, you know, they, they expect either super sweet or super dry. There is like a world of, yeah. you know, cask maturation, especially sherry cask maturation, that uh, it's there to be discovered. And it's I'm very, a nice little gateway. Absolutely. For, for sure. I'm very, very happy that uh, we managed to source those casks mm -hmm. and use them for this whiskey and, and for such an interesting and, and lovely whiskey mm -hmm. as well. Um, what do you guys think uh, if, you're, if you've got this at home or have it in part of the tasting pack do let us know your thoughts or uh, for those who didn't get hold of the tasting pack let us know what you're drinking anyway uh, it's yeah. always good to have a dram in hand absolutely <laughs> Any Berger said that this is another one of his favourites yeah. so I think we're going to have a lot of your favourites Berger in the <laughs> during the tasting you'll see <laughs> but yeah so so yeah I actually, fun fact, I actually been to, I, mean, I think you've been to him in Espinola yes. too, haven't you? And uh, I've been for my 25th. Uh, it's not like a bodega that you just go and walk into, like it's, it's good to send them a little message in advance, it's like a small, you know, sort of family business. And uh, I've been to my 25th birthday and uh, I remember trying a PX, so they only use PX grapes, grown on site, very niche, beautiful bodega. And uh, I remember trying one of their 1918, like, Solera, which was almost like 100 years old. And I was, like, turning 25, so it's like a quarter of a century. It was special. It was, like, absolutely, yeah, it was one of the most beautiful bodegas and the nicest people yeah, as well that, that you get to meet in Andalusia, which is, like, yeah, it was great. You should go. Go drink sherry. Go <laughs> visit them as well. Shall we move to whiskey number three? Let's do it. Let's do it. Some people are joining us from Taiwan. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, Tatsuya is asking us, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, he wants to go and search the whiskeys. What are we going to do with the casks uh, after? What, what did we do with the casks after the release? I imagine we just fill them again, I think. I I'm not entirely sure, but uh, oh, I imagine. We've... I think. I hope we feel <laughs> okay. Let me change that phrase. I hope we feel them again, uh, <laughs> but maybe that's a question that we should actually ask um, uh, you. Um, sorry, you and our managing director, or James, or Ryan in the warehouse, or someone else at the distillery. Unfortunately, we are only a brand ambassador and a sales manager here, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> we don't know anything. We don't take any responsibility. <laughs> but yeah, whiskey number three. If you don't guess this on the nose already, I mean, you, <laughs> there's something wrong with you. This is the most obvious of the cast maturation, I think, which is also super delicious. I think it definitely shows off its its cast type um, on the nose right away. Yes. It's a very rich, rich nose. Absolutely. Lots of tropical fruit, lots of banana. This one is, for me, is like banana all the way. So banana. This is so, yeah, as you said, so tropical. And very syrupy as well on the nose. I think something can be syrupy on the nose, but you know what I mean? It's totally. <laughs> kind of like bitter. Yeah, um, absolutely. Syrupy. It, it reminds me a bit of like the, the smell that you get when you do a, a flambe, or like, or like when you, when you like a, creme brulee or something you know when yeah. you're burning alcohol and sugar at mm -hmm. the same time exactly. you know that like boozy um sweet like <laughs> yeah, yeah that boozy sweet note which is good like you know it's intoxicating but in a good way that's lovely on the nose packs a punch it does, it does <laughs> a punch, but compared to the previous two as well like you could tell this is like mm, definitely has a home so we give it a little taste let's do it cheers <laughs> that's uh, an awesome mouthfeel that's, yeah. that's amazing still, it amazing? still retains that fruitiness that uh, is like you know, very Aaron and actually that's something that's interesting because this is a very, is it again a different style of cask that's used in the general makeup of the whiskey but in every single Aaron you try something I absolutely love about the brand and I love lots of things and the whiskey we produce is that no matter what kind of cask we're playing with, you will still find Aaron, that Aaron sort of hallmark stamp at the center of uh, the whiskey, which is so important because you have so many whiskey distilleries yeah. today. And just trying to kind of pick apart that identity in each dram you try is, is absolutely fantastic. So it's definitely Aaron, but it's kind of Aaron with yet another twist. Yeah. Um, so do let us know if anyone's got any guesses as to what, uh, what cask potentially has been used here. I think if you if you're into other spirits, I think this would be a, like an easy one to tell. And I know for a fact that I, there are specific people, like uh, friends and family, that absolutely love this because their cask maturation, which is not a shy finish anyway, we'll tell you about it in a second. It really like gives like you know like packs a punch to the whiskey. Um, I actually think this is the possibly the only one of the tasting set that I think I'm gonna add a little bit of water mm. to it because excuse me, I actually do feel a bit of fieriness, which I don't mind in general, but I'm actually curious just to see how this, you know, tropical fruitness, you know, this mango. And pineapple is something. Yeah. That... I was going to say this mango and pineapple puree. <laughs> Take us to a beach somewhere tropical. Oh, let's go to Brazil tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, this is very much like, you know, like a sandy white beaches on a like a brazilian beach caipirinha mm -hmm. flying around <laughs> palm trees that's yeah from uh, from aaron i mean we do i don't know if you saw on our social media by the way but uh, um aaron has some uh interesting waters at the moment the uh that actually all turned uh turquoise like a very mediterranean looking it could be in the mediterranean <laughs> so this Costa del aaron. <laughs> we should we should have had this tasting like Maybe I can know on Brodick Bay. <laughs> Unfortunately, the weather is not the best right now, but we hope that uh, it's going to open up a little bit later. But it's definitely a beach, uh, <laughs> beach dram. So, what are the thoughts? Any guesses? Tobias um, is saying uh, possibly a port cask. I think port cask is a little bit too dark, but uh, I appreciate the guess anyway uh mike uh is saying is making him groggy groggy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean yeah <laughs> and then obviously we have jan just saying it out loud rum so well it. Done. A good yes guess. very yeah. good guess uh, it is rum indeed so uh so yeah it is a lovely Actually, uh, I've got the, yeah. So this is actually a small batch that we've done 
for the visitor center here at La Cranza. So again, something that you might not have been able to try is I believe re released this year. Um, so obviously with yeah. all the travel restrictions in place, um, don't think many people have had a chance to try it. Um, let us know if you have, um, but it's just a great way for us to be able to kind of showcase yet another sort of twist on Aaron. So with this small batch, uh, we have had uh, maturation bourbon casks for the first eight years, and then we finished those casks for five years in rum casks from plantation. Lovely. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that we picked this because uh, I mean, we're saying that silver lining of the of the pandemic is that our distillery exclusives were not very much distillery exclusives, obviously during the pandemic because we were um, we were putting them on online as well so that people could grab them but now uh since the b word <laughs> <laughs> happened and you know we're, we're getting a few more people now on the island which is great but it was really uh because we know that we had some you know viewers from um, from europe and overseas as well it was just a very nice chance a nice opportunity to share something that is a distillery exclusive product but it's so tasty and like so wonderful so it's just very nice to be able to share it and uh Certainly. We don't normally do rum cats. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. it's very it's, few and, and far between. Yeah, a few more details as well. So this is a 13 years old uh, small batch. It's 54.4, so a nice cask strength one for you. Yeah. And it's a, oh, it's so just a distillery exclusive as well. From, yeah, from last year. From last year, yeah. So yeah, nice to be able to Not share it. Yeah. I think you can't get wrong with the rum cask anyway, <laughs> especially if you like rum. It's uh, <laughs> it's very rummy, but it still holds that like you know whiskey texture and like that whiskey hump to it, which is great. So and I think a little bit of water was nice. I still maybe prefer that at fifty four point four though, but uh, interesting to try it anyway. But again, also having a sort of rum cask uh, finish, it kind of shows that being obviously an independent whiskey uh, distillery. We're not um, afraid to experiment as well. And we like playing with all these sort of different style casks. And again, it kind of a testament to James McTaggart's wood policy that he introduced as well. So I believe he actually handpicked uh, the casks for this small batch. And yeah. um, so it's, yeah, it's just a great way to kind of show an Aaron, it's another face of, of Aaron really. We've been known for cask finishes since the beginning of time. So <laughs> it's good that we keep that tradition alive and, you know, and if we get, I mean, if you got a hold of amazing cast, why not, you know, using them, especially for like, you know, small batches and limited editions like these ones. So, so yeah. Moving on, we have the darkest uh, whiskey of, uh, <laughs> of the day, of the tasting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, looking at this color is... Yeah, that is absolutely enough out. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's not iron brew for anyone else. <laughs> There's a bit of like an amberish yeah, color, which a, is lovely. Like orangey. Yeah. Beautiful. I really like this color actually, because it's not your classic like dark red. It's actually it is very orangey. It's very iron mm -hmm. brew. This is a first official iron brew. <laughs> Vote in the comment for an iron brew iron whiskey. <laughs> iron brew finished iron whiskey. I do wonder how that's gonna taste like, but no, we're gonna be professional at this is whiskey now. We're not gonna do that. So Oof. That's got a lovely nose as well. Very rich. It's like sweet, but also a bit salty. It's like, um, it, yeah, it's almost like a, you know that there's been, a, you know, some European, like, you know, wood used, but mm -hmm. it's not uh, predominant, like super dry mm -hmm. or super sweet. It's actually very balanced. It's almost like having baked peaches, but like with, like you know, rock salt on top, or like dark chocolate. You know, seventy mm -hmm. percent dark chocolate with like rock salt. So you have that creamy, sweet, but also not overly sweet, with a bit of like you know minerality and and saltiness to it. I get quite a lot of strawberry on the nose. It's like strawberry mm. laces for me. That's that sweetness. Totally, and a bit of chocolate as well. Do you know if that's giving anyone any hints to what, uh, <laughs> what casks might have been used? Yeah. Should we take a sip? Absolutely. How can you resist? <laughs> yeah. That's like, <laughs> that's like, 
I think I think it's obvious that we moved into another mm. like age category. Mm. If you if you if you know what I mean, uh, if you if, I mean I've been tasting. We've been tasting irons now for two years and a half. Fun fact: we started exactly on the same day, <laughs> two years and a half ago. Um, but I think there's a especially in the texture and flavor as well. But there is a definitely a, a definite distinction from like you know young iron like seven eight ten thirteen which is already like beautiful at this age and then past that 15 16 mm -hmm. and then going down it really changes yeah like on the palate like it's it's it gets into this other universe of like you know of uh elegance <laughs> like i don't even know it's, it's just like beautiful creamy soft elegant texture um you know they're both absolutely wonderful i'm not saying one is better than the other but I think you can spot spot it when you when you taste iron, especially in the palate yeah. and the finish. It's yeah. a yes, a little bit more mellowness to it. <laughs> Jan, Jan, I think you're amazing. Next time you should come and do this with us. It just said like this is an older one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you are right. <laughs> but which one is it? Which one do you think it is of the older one? To give you a little hint, we can tell you that it's not a single cask, so it's actually a small batch, again. Do you want to guess which casks have been used for this one? Someone said 25-year-old, I, I, I wish, but no. <laughs> Maybe next time we'll use a 25-year-old. This is like me getting married and <laughs> and sharing a drum you know like a special drum with my loved one sort of drum that's one of those the like remarkable ah oh, it's lovely it's definitely one that's got layers as well it kind of you get that sort of fruity sweetness and then it kind of goes into that dark chocolate almost like a slightly creamy yeah as well i totally get like even like a coffee mm -hmm. truffle if there was such a thing or like salted caramel mm -hmm. that's it like you get a lot of salted caramel Fruity, but also creamy. I like the balance, I have to yeah. say. Uh, we can tell that it's a bit obvious. There are there is some, you know, there are some sherry casks involved mm -hmm. in this, but there's also other type of casks. So, uh, so, so yeah. Someone, Andrew, is wondering: Is this um, the drama dune? And we're like, you're close, but not yeah, not quite. quite. <laughs> close, but not quite. Uh, Dennis uh, is saying Oloroso. You're part right. <laughs> I think uh, we should probably do a bit of a reveal now. I think we should. People might want we to know should what totally it is. do that. It was drum roll. Drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. The Kill Donan and Flada. Woo! Uh, yeah, uh, Louise also said uh, the Locranza. Again, she, you were close very, if you very, were very referring close. to the Locranza Castle, uh, but uh, it's actually the Kill Donan and, and Flada, uh, which is the third installment of our explorer series um so um so yeah lucy will tell a little bit about that in a second i'll tell you what's inside this this tin box <laughs> uh, it is obviously a whiskey that is 21 years old it was released already i want to say like last year yeah so so yeah like old casks obviously not no like you know some some 90s casks were used for this uh, it's about the 50.4% this one was um, released at 9,000 9, bottles were released of this product worldwide as well. So we shared it with different markets. I mean, the color, even the bottle is absolutely stunning. I absolutely love this bottle, which is great. Um, but yeah, it was a mixture of, sorry about that. It was a mixture of uh, sherry panchons, sherry butts, and ruby port pipes as well. So I think we mixed up a little bit of dark casks yes. and uh, and creating this beauty, which is which is amazing. Yeah. Do you like the Explorer series? I think oh, I think this is fantastic. Oh, they're all great. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, so the, the idea behind the Explorer Oops. series. Um, so this is the third edition. So there are four products in total, and these uh, products were designed uh, designed to celebrate uh, different parts of the island and kind of just uh, sort of bring the sort of Aaron tasting experience to life through the celebration of, of different points in Aaron. So 
the first one we uh, released was the Brodick Bay. The second one was the La Cranza Castle, which I believe is mentioned uh, in the chat as a guest for this whiskey. <laughs> this is our third, Kildonan and, and Polada. Um, and there's also a fourth one as well. Yeah, the, I think he, yeah, I someone also yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is one that uh, uh, you could still find uh, a few bottles around, but as it was released last year, uh, you know, it's a little bit scarce. Uh, but yeah, again, I, this is actually, I was telling you the first time I tried it because it was released and then the pandemic happened and I actually never had the chance to sit down and, and try it properly. And I'm glad that the festival, <laughs> the virtual festival gave me this chance. Um, so, so yeah, lovely, lovely product. And obviously, Explorer Series is all about, you know, showcasing the beauty of the island and uh, Kildonan and Plata is absolutely beautiful like i mean uh obviously i i haven't been to Plata island to see the lighthouse but i've been to kildon and many times it's actually one of my favorite beach especially when you go further like you know left and uh, you get to see like you know kildon castle like the ruins and you look for dinosaur prints on the beach it's absolutely beautiful i have a very sweet memory of my brother i i brought him there two years ago when he came to Ireland for the first time and he fell in love, there were like 25 degrees and it was super sunny. I don't know how it happened, no me juice, it was great. <laughs> and I brought him to look Kildona and we had a picnic, uh, Italian style. And uh, I think he had like a moment, an emotional moment. And he looked up, you know, to the mountains, down to like, you know, the, the rolling hills and then the beach and then you see Elsa Craig and like, you know, Kildona and uh, Plada. On a very clear day, you get to see Northern Ireland as well, which is great. And he turned to me and said like, this is the Hawaii of Scotland. And I still use that to this day in my tastings because it's so sweet. <laughs> it was like, look, you like everything in like 180 degrees views. And I was like, yes, we are lucky. I think that had a massive, uh, coming from Southern Italy, that had like a massive, massive, massive help <laughs> in making him fall in love with the island. Uh, but yeah, absolutely lovely beach. You should go and, and visit. Cool. Shall we move on to whiskey number five? I think so. Yeah. Let's do it. Well done for all of you to guess in the, like, yeah. the Explorer series and to guess, you know, also some of the names and the age. So uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, you have a good palate and a good nose. So, <laughs> so well done. And do let us know if you've tried any of the Explorers before or any of the previous ones. Of um, course. It's, again, quite interesting just to see um, which ones are have been tasted and which ones you can still find as you say i think these ones this one is still i think this one is actually still on our website as well available. so yeah limited amount but you should still be able to find that if you if you like it um but yeah i think the fear that i have is that because being a, co a collector's item as well i fear that people don't don't open them enough so mm -hmm. it was just great that we managed to find some bottles around the office and uh, and put them in a in a tasting set so that we actually know how it tastes like because it's I great to share them as well yeah, yeah. old iron should should be drunk so <laughs> So yeah, also let us know what you think of the, this is the first time that we're done, you know, tasting set and the first time that we're, I think we're doing a virtual blind uh, tasting. So if you like it as a, as an idea, you know, as a, as an activity, as a project, you know, we can look in the future and doing more with random whiskeys from the past. I don't know if you know, but we bottled a lot of whiskey every year. So, <laughs> so we got a lot to choose from. So, so yeah, let's have a note to number five. Mm. A bit different uh, from still the same melon as I want to say on the nose, like the softness, but not as dark. That was slightly dusty. Is that Dunnage Warehouse that you spoke Again, about? Again, yeah. Um, it's very nice and nice dusty nose. That would be a good thing. <laughs> say that. Good dusty. <laughs> Again, you've got that kind of base tropical fruit note that I love with the, again, it's like the older style, uh, Aaron. Yeah. Which is the noticeable right away. Someone is saying that, Berger is saying that he loves the posters that go with the, with the series, with the Explorer yeah, series. Absolutely love him. So a uh, shout out to um, uh, Katrina Todd, which is a local artist that actually, uh, created you know the the artwork for our for our whiskies um uh i think down at lag uh, we actually sell posters of our work mm -hmm. as well so you could actually get it as a proper poster but we've been uh, also selling the 
metal like the beautiful metal, metal plaques. plaques yeah i absolutely love those very old school vintage yeah know, that kind of postcard that travel yeah exactly which you can still purchase from the website as well so so yeah i get a lot of oranges and this i don't know why <laughs> i get like walking um yeah, it reminds me a little bit of home, like, you know, Sorrento, Amalticos, when you walk down the, it's a hot summer day, so you can really smell, you know, the oranges that are burning under the sun, and you get that whiff of orange zestiness. Yeah, it's like the warm, orange peel and yeah. orange zest. Warm Maybe orange Seville oranges, again. Yeah, another, hint, another hint. hint <laughs> also very almond, Chris, uh, uh, warm, warm amber, warm, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Warm, al <laughs> warm almond croissant that's what i meant to say warm <laughs> almond croissant it's very uh warm marzipani like a warm cake like warm marzip warm sicilian marzipan cakes that's what i meant to say there you go i'm struggling <laughs> <laughs> this is my sort of i mean i love all arms um but uh, this is my my sort of thing I'm yeah a big, big, big fan i think it's um yeah, I think it's like a um, different, like a, you can tell that there's old age to mm. it, but uh, it's, it's that wood influence. Yeah, as well. a different sort of uh, a wood influence. Let's give it a little taste. Cheers. Mm. It's a very um, silky whiskey. <laughs> that oh my nice God, thing. how can it be so fruity and, mm. and juicy? At that age, <laughs> this is amazing. Sorry, <laughs> that's so tasty. I think compared to the previous whiskey, it's not that we shouldn't compare them. Because the the previous whiskey was definitely more softer, but like darker in flavor as well. But this is still so juicy. Mm. Like I really like that texture. Again, one of the things that I love the most about Iron, one of the things that I fell in love with. When I when I started drinking Arab whiskey when I moved uh, to Scotland was iron texture like the whiskey texture because it's just so juicy and creamy it's like lovely as you know making a very slow distillation actually <laughs> does have you know its its benefits and it does help yeah it teases out that kind of iron fruitiness that we yeah. all know and love um it has got that that very sweet um sort of undertone again the iron hallmark is there slightly spiced at the end as well which again might be a, a giveaway for the mm. cask type that was used for uh, for this particular product and this was uh this one's released this year yeah i believe so another hint for anyone who's uh, attempting to guess released this year what could it be and just meet says frangipane that's exactly what i had in <laughs> mind andrew exactly what i had in mind i think we got a winner <laughs> Is it the Dramadun point? It is the Dramadun <laughs> point. It is indeed. <laughs> so it's the fourth in the series. Again, uh, just released a couple of months ago. So it's nice to be able to, to share this as well. As it has been uh, sort of available in markets um, and also available from our web shop as well. Yeah, and it still is, yeah. Um, but it's just another way to kind of try a limited edition to you know, get people to open up those bottles and really enjoy uh, the liquid as well um, in these limited editions. Uh, so this one is 23 years old. It's 49.5. So not quite as sort of punchy, but it's, it's, it's it still holds its own in terms of that length and the finish. And this time we used sherry punchins uh, for the maturation of uh, the, this whiskey. And so again, you've got that sherry, that sort of old style sherry mix yeah. combined with, with Aaron, which is lovely. And again, it's celebrating another part of our beautiful island. I've not actually been to Drummerdine Point yet, but uh, definitely need to put that to the top of my list, I think. So if you want to give us some golf lessons, like uh, feel free to, to come. We'll give you whiskey in exchange. So I am, I, I don't know why I already feel that I'd be extremely bad at golf, <laughs> just like as a, you know, not even trying. But yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, driving the, you have like, you know, the beautiful um, Shiskin golf course right right there. So if you're into golfing and you want to golf in a breathtaking, you know, with breathtaking views, it's a lovely place to go. I actually was lucky enough to go to the King's Caves a few weeks ago, 
um, and we walked all the way to Dramadun Point, which yeah. is which is just it's just absolutely beautiful. You see that you know the sort of like coastline and those rugged cliffs very much reminded me of um, uh, Staffa, you know, like a single scape, sort of like, I know it's very different, no puffins or anything, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it is very unusual, you know, um, very unusual coastline and uh, absolutely lovely, you know, beautiful place. So I also love this because it shows that, you know, old Chevy casks, obviously this must have been 97, 98, you know, Chevy casks from that sort of time, uh, most likely refilled mm -hmm. again, small company you know independent company that started the business in 1995 so there was not a lot of demand for whiskey and when you start small you you kind of like grab whatever you can and even like, you know despite the fact that um uh the casts were like you know maybe like a second or third refill the spirit really shines here so it's it's amazing to see it like you know so so tasty like you know it's evolved so much after 23 years which is great so and because of that, so we have quite a few uh, sort of hogsheads and puncheons and things in our warehouse um, from the earlier days that we actually don't know their provenance. So as you Absolutely. say, it's kind of even though, you know, the wood policy that James McTaggart introduced wasn't around then, again, it's testament to our spirit, as you say, you need to... Uh, a lovely spirit to yeah uh, absolutely. we are biased of course <laughs> I mean, but, but then again you love you tune in England to an Aaron whiskey festival tasting so what else do you want to know <laughs> but yeah oh Paul Dems is also joining hi, and he's Paul. saying hi ciao Paul <laughs> um can't wait to go to a whiskey festival again and see all the all the lovely whiskey people again Shut bother them at their stands <laughs> you know while they work to to get a drum and have a chat and catch up on life <laughs> and see all of you guys as well face to face uh, yeah. which hopefully we'll be able to do sooner rather than than later and share a drum with you in person as well yeah but hopefully you're enjoying that drum zoom point so uh, again uh, a different expression of Aaron's and Joy. Hopefully, we should actually take some of these two drama dune points. And yeah. Places oh my to God. Have a drama. We should do. We should totally do that. One explorer series, like uh, at each point. <laughs> the explorer series tasting. We we. I was gonna say we walk. We're not tasting gonna walk. Tour, yeah, yeah we're not gonna. A while. <laughs> someone will, someone will drive us to these places. <laughs> uh, most of them are, are pretty easy to get to anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> or maybe Andrew Smith wants to cycle to all of them, and then and then we'll we'll meet and Jan as well. You should totally yeah, do that. Each other, yeah. <laughs> We get one of those bikes that are like, you know, the baby carriage <laughs> at the back and we're all sitting like that with whiskeys in hand. Uh, but yeah, jokes aside, uh, let's try uh, the last whiskey the, of the tasting set um, uh, together. So whiskey number six we're trying last now. Last but not least. Last but not least, I'm pretty sure. It's, I, I hope you're going to join us for the other tastings as well and drum with us all afternoon. So a little hint here, this is actually a uh, single cask, mm -hmm. the only single cask of the of the tasting set today. Again, we wanted to give you something special that really went under the radar because again of this nonsense thing that happened worldwide, I don't know what that is, but uh, the, yeah. I think this is almost like a um, continuation of, of whiskey number five. I was going to say exactly the same thing. It's uh, it's definitely along a similar vein. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So again, all those oranges and the, like the warm, like walking into a bakery and like, you know, walking into a bakery in Spain, <laughs> precisely, I don't know, wait, wait, uh, Barcelona and... <laughs> It's flowery as well. I get a lot of like maybe like orchid, like um, it's like flowers, but also the orange blossom. That's the thing. It's like very, very and rose petals a bit. Yeah, the orange is so subtle, like orange water. Yeah, it's kind of like slightly more tropical side as well. Yeah, absolutely. Very subtle though, like it's a beautiful, sweet, like manuka honey sweetness. Almost like if you were putting, uh, you know, orange melon. I don't know if it has a can. Do you call it cantaloupe as well? No. Yeah, cantaloupe. Yeah, that's the one. Honeydew with like um, honey on top. 
Honey yeah. <laughs> Honey Honey yeah. If there was such a thing, try it at home and tell us how it tastes <laughs> like. I'll be the next uh, sort of pairing with uh, all these. Get, uh, actually, yeah, maybe that's things. what we should do. Get the get the melon maybe grill it a bit on each side and then glaze it with like manuka honey and that's how old iron tastes is like there you go obviously it's all personal do tell us what you're tasting as well i mean uh... <laughs> <laughs> Jan, this is in, this is Jan stop it <laughs> <laughs> well you're close but, but, but like yeah yeah and I'm glad you're rolling for the cycling as well. So can you mix up as well? Oh man. Fruit juice. <laughs> is this 40% ABV? This goes down like way too down easily. Well. Wow. Super elegant, super lush. Again, it's kind of very similar to the one. It, the there's food. definitely similarities mm. to what the fifth dram that we tried, but it's kind of more slightly more concentrated. Absolutely. Obviously, being the single cast as well. Yeah, I do like a single cast. Yeah, mm. delicious. What do you think, people at home, tasting this with us? I think that's the beauty of a uh, single cast. I know Mariella and I from sort of our independent bottler mm. days. Um, it's just awesome to be able to try that one sort of individual cask from the warehouse because you obviously have the same kind of general Aaron character but having that one sort of example of that in a more kind of concentrated fashion is is very cool indeed and you often get like little nuances and little yeah, different things as absolutely well. I think I was very happy when Marjorie as well when we joined Aaron to see how many single casts that have been released because it's wonderful to try a core range product because it's, it's there, you know, like benchmark, you go back and, you know, it never lets you down. But, um, but yeah, sometimes you come across like some single casks uh, that I'm even shocked, you know, like by, and I'm like, oh my God. And one thing that always happens to me, I imagine it happens to you too when we work at festivals is that if someone has bottled an iron independently, they always do, they always do it to me. They always go like, try it and I'm like oh what is this and I'm like well you tell me and I always 99% of the time it's like an independent bottled iron and every time I try it I'm like yeah that's delicious <laughs> it's a good cask well done <laughs> very much well done so so yeah so what do you think it is let's see someone said white stag white stag uh um sweet tooth Andrew, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. Uh, I, I I live for pastries and like... Uh, uh... Firing up the barbecue, we'll come and join you. <laughs> Where are you on the island? I mean, you, you are nearby, we'll come. I'll, we'll bring the melon. The cop is, you know, the cop and Brodick must have some. So we can do this now, today. Uh, but yeah. So yeah. No one has guessed it right. Should we? Should so I we? think, Mariella, do you want to do the Let's final do reveal? It. It's, a, it's a big box, so <laughs> give, me, give me a second before I smash it on the floor. It is the Aaron Festival single cask from last year. So beautiful new presentation. Shout out to Jackie <laughs> that worked on this, that worked on the rebrand and that can literally create yeah. this absolute job. beautiful bottle. Uh, that's why, oh, wow. That's what I mean. Solid, solid oak. <laughs> that's what I mean by, um, uh, you know, a beautiful bottle, beautiful packaging, but also yeah. under the radar. I think this, this bottle and this whiskey should have gotten so much more love than it did. I don't know if you can see it from your glass as well, but it almost has like a sort of like a green dusty tint to it as well, which I absolutely adore that you find sometimes like in old old whiskies, you know. Again, there's no filtration in this. So if you get a bit of sediment in it, it's, you know, it's all natural. But yeah, I mean, so for those of you that don't know, the white stags that don't, then they're from let me rephrase that. For those of you that are not white stags and don't know about this bottle, uh, this is actually uh, chosen by 10 lucky uh, white stags uh, every year. So during the festival, um, we obviously have this white stag community, which will be like, you know, the Aaron fan base, you know, that were whiskey friends that really like Aaron and would follow us, you know, on our journey. Um, 10 lucky white stags come to the festival 
and they have a um, secret tasting with the uh, Ewan Mitchell, managing director, and James McTaggart, our master blender. They try six whiskey blind, like you did today, and then they pick one whiskey. The whiskey that they pick is going to then be bottled the next year's festival, and it's going to be the festival single cast. So we actually have the names of those people that chose this from uh, two years ago. And uh, tonight we're going to have 15 people. Again, the joy of doing things virtual. James McTaggart was not happy to have 15 people in one tasting, but we convinced him anyway. So you can thank us later. Uh, but yeah, so we have the 10 names of the lucky ones that actually got to choose this cast. So you should thank them as well. But this is a 1996 single cask, bottled at 47.8%. And it's, just to let you know, been distilled on the 7th of February 1996 and then bottled on the 9th of june in 2020 only 271 bottles uh were released and i believe and i believe they've all been sold yeah as well. so this is another opportunity for uh you guys to try something that is much harder to to come by and actually it's quite nice to have a festival bottling from last year again it's Absolutely. our festival weekend as you guys will know like with our uh, Malton music festival celebrations online again for the second year running uh, because of covid um, but it's a lovely way to be able to kind of, again, celebrate the festival and, as you say, showcase that something that might have gone under the radar yeah. uh, last year. We really wanted to give you, you know, a lot of special grounds. We really wanted to, you know, give you something super special as well to finish off the tasting. Normally, we would have been yeah, outside opening this and sharing it and drinking it with everyone. So, uh, again... It's been great. I will stop saying that now, but uh, you can tell that, like, you know, we really miss you. But we really miss having a normal festival again. But it's just been great to be able to share it. It is also very much congratulations to the people that chose it. We actually have Dwayne Miller uh, in the tasting uh, with us doing the tasting. So well done for well done for choosing that that as well. And um, um, your name is it's here. And yeah, it's it's a wonderful cask again. Bear in mind, 1996, literally, you know, Harold founded the distillery in 93 and started making spirit in 95. So in 1996, we were still really pretty much just trying to fill as many casks exactly. and getting by at a, in a time where distilleries were closing down. There was no demand for whiskey whatsoever. And we were really just facing all the challenges of the keeping the, you know, the company going by selling casks, not even producing gin or vodka or anything like distilleries do these days. It is amazing that today, in 2021, 26 years later, we're still here, yeah. still a small independent company, same you know ground. Now we have a new distillery as well, so exciting times. But uh, it's amazing that we still get to share casks that were made you know 25 years ago. Exactly, and yeah. kind of like a little sneak peek into our distilling history as well. Yeah. So in a couple of days, the distillery turns. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's quite hard to, to believe. We obviously celebrated our 25th anniversary last year, uh, but let the celebrations it's continue. All postponed, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> plenty of more drums yeah. to share. And, and Not like cancelled, all postponed. Don't worry. And the next year is also a huge year for us because lag obviously will come of age. So we have a lot to celebrate. So uh, we'll cram it all up in, in one huge celebration. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, we really hope that you'll come see us soon on the island. The team is miss, has been, you know, unfurled for a long time and now they're opening up again. And we're doing tours and tastings on a lag. We're doing tastings up here in Locranza. The cafes are open and it's just great to see people again. And they really, you know, look forward to welcoming you soon again. We have a lot of new distillery exclusive whiskies that are, you know, quite interesting to try. So we really hope that you have uh, Aaron on your list of places to visit. Um, when we're able to you know travel freely again um but yeah i think this is us i'll read quickly your uh, your question your comments to see what you thought of uh, of whiskey number six as well but if you have any more questions or any more comments you know feel free to feel free to share let's see what you said please louise is saying louise saying um the very last round was very special yeah. <laughs> that was the idea so i'm glad you're you appreciate it uh, Andrew is also saying that uh, you can maybe still find some of these at the distillery. So maybe the some bottles were left hidden on the shelves in Locranza yeah, in the back corner, yeah, <laughs> during the pandemic. So uh, if you if you're planning to visit us, maybe you can still get one, which is great. Um, 
thank you, Louis, if it's thanking us for the tasting. So thank you for joining thank us for joining and us. tuning in. Thank you very much. And thanks to all of you that joined us as well. So, uh, yeah, you all seem to have a to have had a, a great time. So you're all thanking us. We're thanking you <laughs> for joining us virtually. And uh, yeah, we just hope to see you soon again. And uh, we hope that you're joining us uh, with the tour guides uh, tasting as well. We have Scott, another wise tag, fellow wise tag, and now uh, employee of Isle of Iron Distillers as well. Uh, Campbell, which is an institution uh, at Isle of Iron Distillers, and a lovely, super enthusiastic Pam doing the tour, taste, uh, tour guides tasting uh, in an hour. So we hope you join us for that too. But mostly thank thanks you. to you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. You guys stay, continue to stay safe. And uh, Hope to see you guys back next year in real life. Cool. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Keep uh, healthy and safe wherever you are in the world. And uh, cheers to cheers, guys. to next year's festival. Bye-bye. <laughs>